to work with you. Good to support the village. I'm really, really glad to see that uh, DEF CON continued on this year. I think it was a great idea. You know, there's a lot of people that don't always get to make it out to DEF CON. And so, you know, people get a little taste of what it's like. They miss the human interaction part, but I would bet it's going to be back even bigger and stronger next year. But thanks to Omar and Joseph for continuing this on as well as DEF CON in general. So I'm happy to present my new uh, talk here today. Uh, I have a talk that I do, the Pentester Blueprint, and it's basically a talk on becoming a pen tester. And so uh, I came up with something more red team related because there's a lot of confusion between what true red teaming is and pen testing. So who am I? I'm Philip Wiley. I have my CISSP, OSCP, and the SANS GWAPT cert. Uh, I'm a senior lead at a global consumer products company. I'm also an adjunct professor at Dallas College, formerly Richland College. I'm the founder of the Pwn School Project, which is a monthly, uh, now virtual meetup that teaches cybersecurity techniques, as well as a big focus on stuff offensive security. So a lot of our talks are geared towards that. Even some good talks on socks and other areas of security. I've been in technology and infosec for over 22 years. Uh, 2004 is when I got my start into security. The the last eight years I've spent pen testing. First five years I was a consultant. Uh, I was featured in the book, the Tribe of Hackers Red Team book edition. So those are some really great books by Marcus Carey and, and Jennifer Jen. Uh, really good for those getting started out, but I recommend it for anyone else. It's advice from industry professionals on different topics. There's the Red Team. There's the first Tribe of Hackers. It's across all spectrums of security. And then there's the uh, the uh, leadership book out. And I'm also the co-author of the Pentester Blueprint, starting a career in ethical hacking. Uh, I took my talk, the Pentester Blueprint, and and uh, decided to make a book. And I teamed up with uh, Kim Crowley to help me make that a reality. So that should be coming out late fall or so. And I'm also a co-host of the Uncommon Journey podcast with Chloe Mistagi and Alyssa Miller. So the agenda, we're going to, during this talk, we're going to, I'm going to describe my path into information, of offensive security, because a lot of people that attend these talks are trying to get into it. There's not a lot of, you know, you have to look out there to find good information on how to get into certain areas of security, and there's not a lot of stuff on offensive security. So continuing on in the spirit of the blueprint, pen tester blueprint talk, I've kind of extended that on to offensive security in general, this with this talk being more focused on on uh, red teaming. We're going to discuss the, the, what offensive security is, the different domains, a red team intro, uh, red team tools, a red team blueprint, as well as some other educational resources and books out there and blogs. So my offensive security path is kind of an unusual one. I started out as a pro wrestler. I graduated high school and my friends asked me, what are you going to do for a career? And I did not have a clue. I mean, Really, college wasn't in the plans for me, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was a power lifter, and my friends said, hey, you're a big guy. You should be a pro wrestler. So I went to wrestling school, and I wrestled for a few years. And I got out in the late 80s due to needing a more uh, stable career since I got married. So I was married and needed a stable career for my, for my wife and future family. Uh, when I did that, you know, just having, you know, working through other areas of manual labor and retail sales. I, I saw an ad on TV for a trade school that taught AutoCAD. So I went to school to be a CAD draftsman and there's where things really started to take off. Uh, I learned about sysadmin work because I, I was working in offices and uh, we had a, a network administrator or system administrator come in one time to work on our systems and found out that they, you know, this guy was making more money than I was, and what he did looked a lot more interesting. I taught myself how to build computers, took a Nobel Network class. It was, used to be the popular network operating system before Microsoft really took off with uh, their directory services. So from there, I moved into InfoSec and then AppSec, and AppSec is really where I kind of found out about pen testing and offensive security, learning how to use web application vulnerability scanners, going to some different vendor talks on their tools and stuff got me interested in pen testing. So in 2000, 
12, I got laid off from my, my job of 14 years at a mortgage company. And then I went to work as a consultant working in pen testing. I did that for five years and then got out of consulting and moved more into the corporate world. And then back in November, I moved into red teaming. So this is a slide I share every semester and do, during all these conference talks, because, you know, only hack if you have permission, even better written permission, hacking without permission is illegal. So as long as you have permission, you're good. But, but you know, you don't want to get in any trouble because uh, if you get any kind of uh, uh, criminal record, then it kind of makes it hard to work in any area of IT and especially something like offensive security. So I, I like this quote. I first learned about it from Spider-Man with great, great power comes great responsibility. So what is offensive security? So offensive security is just kind of a broad generalization of different types of ethical hacking. So it's assessing security of a target using adversary tactics, techniques, and, and procedures, or TPPs, commonly known as ethical hacking. So some of the different domains in offensive security, two main categories is pen testing and red teaming. Uh, you can see different areas that, in pen testing that are covered uh, network application, network including wireless cloud, social engineering, physical security, hardware, and vehicle security can be tested through pen testing. Red teaming is kind of more of a specialized area. Uh, you're getting into more adversarial type simulations. But there's been a lot of conf confusion. So red teaming, a red team engagement is not a pen test. It's not the same thing. They've been used interchangeably, pen testing and red team for years. It's a way to generalize, kind of the same way the blue team generalizes de the defensive side, even to give, so, you know, even on the defensive side, all blue team's not the same. There's a lot of differences. But red team, a lot of people have confused and think that red teaming in general, that it's all the same, but it's not. So there's, there are some distinct differences. Some of the commonalities you read that are, you know, there's these similarities between the two areas, red, since, they're, you know, they're both, forms of pen testing or, you know, forms of offensive security, exploitation, social engineering, phishing, and uh, physical security exploitation are used on both of these. Sometimes not everything with your pen testing, you know, a lot of times only social engineering, phishing, or physical uh, security exploitation is not part of it unless it's, you know, specifically built into the statement of work, the rules of engagement. And so, so it's more, there's some differences there too. So with red teaming, you're emulating a threat actor, an APT, uh, an advanced persistent threat. With pen testing, you're using some of those techniques, but you're not emulating a threat actor. You're just using some of those techniques. And red teaming, you're trying to avoid detection. With pen testing, you're, you're, it's a time box test. You're limited to the amount of time you have to test. So you don't have time to go low and slow to try to, to avoid being detected. And due to the time constraints, you're using vulnerability scanners and doing a lot of uh, port and service scanning, which makes it more loud. So you're not really avoiding detection. Sometimes it could be part of a statement of work, but usually this gets more into your red teaming. Uh, red teaming is less restrictive. There's more areas you can, in most cases, social engineering, phishing are part of it, part of the scope. Uh, with the pen testing, it's more limited. With, with PCI, when PCI came out, a lot of the, the pen tests and PCI has drove a lot of pen testing requirements to be PCI compliant. Uh, you know, it's a requirement to be pen tested. So a lot of the focus has been on just what need, is needed to be compliant and not overall security. So some things get missed. And that's kind of carried on throughout pen test. You know, there's a certain area that, that wants that they want to be tested. Uh, sometimes it's not a lot of time to plan it out budget constraints they just want to get it done quickly and and with pen testing vulnerability is the focus whereas with red teaming you're trying to simulate a, an actual attacker or, or cyber criminal and there's a lot of tool commonalities so if you look at the the list of tools here you see everything is pretty much the same there are some variants and some things that are not on this list but the common tools are listed here with pen testing you're using vulnerability scanners red teaming you know, if you're using a vulnerability scanner, you're going to cause noise. You know, you want to be quiet. Uh, Metasploit can be across both of those. And also you see um, 
malware and exploits used across both, but red teaming, it's more heavily dependent on to get the footholds using malware through phishing campaigns. Command and control are listed on both uh, and, and useful in both, but a lot more heavily relied on for red teaming. And so uh, here's kind of a little red introduction on red teaming. Uh, red teaming is scenario-based assessment, emulating threat actors, and even simulating specific APTs. You can go through like the MITRE ATT&CK framework and pick out specific APTs to, to mimic. The goal of red team opera operation is to simulate real world breaches. Not only is this operator testing the security of technology, they're testing the people in the process. A great qu quote from Wirefall, the founder of Dallas Hackers Association, is the red team tests the blue team. And this is a good way to describe that. When you're doing a pen test, you're really not testing the people, you're testing the security controls and the technology. With red teaming, you're testing the reactions of the defenders, as well as any of the systems being detected. During a pen test, things can be detected and usually, unless it's built in to block it, you're not gonna get blocked. They're gonna let you complete the pen test. And red team operations take, take a lot of time to plan and perform. So you're, you're trying to go up, plan, you know, a specific scenario, a certain type APT you're trying to imitate. So you're taking the time to plan this out to perform it. And usually you got a little more, you got more time, you know, a pen test, you know, not to say it's a thorough pen test, but a lot of times pen test may be a week, you know, like a red team engagement could be, you know, four weeks or it could be months. So it depends on the scenario you're trying to, to uh, imitate. And so red team operations rely heavily on OSINT to enumerate information on target technologies and employees. Uh, this, is, this is leveraged through social engineering and phishing to gain initial foothold in the target environment. You can also do like a, uh, a uh, assume breach and use accounts, but this is a good way to see how easy it is to, to get past, you know, people, you know, the process and technology by using phishing campaigns, you know, sending malicious payloads to end users or, or compromising a site and putting payloads in there to gain access to the systems. Detection avoidance is, is very important for a red team to be successful because part of this is they're trying to stop you. Whereas a pen test, they may see something going on and they're gonna let you finish the pen test. During a red team engagement, usually the, the people you're testing, they don't know about you're doing, you know, they don't know about the pen test, it's not announced. Usually management and a few key people know what's going on. So in case, you know, the uh, defenders detect this, they can report it and it can be treated internally to look like a normal breach to see how everyone reacts to it during that during the exercise. So, so that's important to stay undetected. And and some red team uh, TTPs, red team operations while malware payloads to gain initial footholds. So being able to, to evade and obfuscate your code for your malware and exploits is very important. A lot of times to get it to work in a pen testing role, you have to uh, work on obfuscating your code because uh, PowerShell is getting more detected, although some environments it's not. So as a, as a practitioner, you know, keep trying, you know, people will say this is not environments anymore. It still will be. I mean, I've performed pen tests as recent as uh, the end of 2018 where Windows XP was in a company, a Fortune 100 company. So that stuff's still out there and not everyone's blocking PowerShell, but it's becoming uh, more often blocked. So some of the, the skills that you'll need to work on is really working on the evasion and obfuscation. Command and control or C2 is a very important tool used to compromise systems deliver payloads, elevate privileges, lateral movement, and use for persistence. Cobalt Strike is a very popular command and control, as well as there's some other ones out there, Silent Trinity, Covenant, and uh, actually Team Ares from, from Critical Start came out with Demedios, uh, which is a, a new C2 that's built on Go, so it looks really promising. A, a new one out there and recently was added to the uh, the uh, C2 matrix. And, and red team ops planning. So as we mentioned, there's more planning that goes into this. It can be more detailed. So you can map the APTs from the MITRE ATT&CK framework and use tools like Vector. Uh, Vector is a pretty cool tool I learned about from uh, 
George Otia's talks. He does a lot of great talks on red teaming and purple teaming. He currently works for Scythe, so he's a SANS instructor. He teaches the SANS purple team, I mean, the, the SANS uh, red team course. So keep an eye out for his videos. This vac vector tool is uh, a framework that you can plan out your scenarios for your, your uh, red team engagements. So you can go through and map out the APTs that it's pulling from, from the minor attack framework. And so red team ops can also be less complicated and not mapped to specific APTs, just using common TTPs. And as your program starts out, it may not take really advanced uh, attacks to be able to compromise systems. You know, it's kind of like offensive security in general. You want to make sure that you've got your vulnerability scanning program, your vulnerability management solid in place, uh, you know, before you you include it with pen testing, but you really want to get that in place and working on that. As you get to more open scope pen tests and red team engagements where more things are in, in scope and can be uh, exploited, then you know as you become more mature then you you'll need to to uh emulate more advanced attacks so starting out you may not have to be as complicated but as as you're going along you can become more more complicated and, and detailed in your attacks and using the the uh, tools like the miter attack framework and, and vac vector to map those out are great options And so there's some additional red team benefits here. So a major benefit of red teaming is testing the people process and technology. So during the operation, if activities are not detected, then the red team can work with the, with the security team to tune the security defenses to be able to detect malicious activity. This can be extended to purple teaming engagements or activities where you just work with the uh, blue team to, to tune their systems to detect different types of uh, exploits. So during your testing, if uh, PowerShell is not being detected, if Mimikatz is not being detected, then you can, you know, kind of do a purple team activity, just kind of working with your your blue team as you launch specific attacks, see if they detect it and help them to uh, work on detecting those systems where you can build signatures to uh, detect those vulnerabilities. And so, in the spirit of the the pen tester blueprint. Uh, I'm kind of going to go into some details on here on how to become a red team operator. So, you know, basically red team or a red team operator is a pen tester. You're getting more specialized, uh, going more into adversarial simulation, but you have to start, you, you need a base, the base starting out. So your base, you need to, to understand technology. So if you're jumping in this from, from nothing, uh, then you're going to have to build these technologies. You have to understand networking and operating systems and Active Directory that you're performing pen tests against on these networks and red team engagements. Because Active Directory is Microsoft's directory services where all the users and different computer objects and uh, security settings are set in Active Directory. You get access to that. You can breach a lot of things, uh, compromise on a large scale. I mean, the way to look at it is kind of like a single, single sign-on type of solution using LDAP. So you're able to, if you're able to compromise Active Directory, then you can get access to anything in the environment. So understand, you have to understand this technology. So understanding networking, understanding operations, operating systems from a, you know, a system administrator perspective. You need to be able to start and stop services, you know, disable firewalls, enable services, and that sort of thing during a pen test. So if you gain access, a shell to a system, command line access then the more you understand the command line the more things you can do the more effective you can be and you've got to understand networking and pen testing and hacking so you have to understand the the different tools and techniques that penetration testers and, and and hackers use so you have to have those because you know hacking is part of being a red teamer that's part of the part of the 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 job it's kind of an extension or more advanced form of pen testing and so programming and scripting can be very important. Uh, some of the best hackers I know can program. They can write their own code or they can write their own scripts. Uh, so popular ones out there are Python and PowerShell. From a red team or, or pen tester perspective, you know, knowing how to use PowerShell using some of the tools like PowerShell Empire and some of the different um, 
exploitation tools out there and command and control is very important. So you don't necessarily have to know how to write PowerShell, although it's good. Uh, tools like Python and Golang can be used across multiple platforms. Python has been very popular for years. It allows you to write tools pretty quickly, modify tools. And from programming scripting uh, perspective, at first you need to really be able to you know, modify exploit code, be able to look at Python code and be able to alter that to fit. Maybe you find some exploit code and there's something different about that system that you need to modify. So just understanding how to modify exploits is important. It's a good starting step. But be able to write Python scripts. Golang is a, a very new popular one. I guess it's been out five or six years or so, maybe longer, eight years. But it's a really good one because it's also a compiled language. It can run across multiple platforms. The thing I really like about it too is you can compile uh, code on a Linux or Mac system to run on Windows. So this is kind of nice because some of your exploits, you know, if you're doing a pen test, then you need, you know, a, a similar system with Linux to be able to to uh, compile your exploit code, a similar system, or compile it on that system. With this, you can easily compile it on your own your own system. And this C sharp is a very popular one for for uh, pen testing since kind of some of the PowerShell started getting detected and people moved on to C sharp. There's a lot of good uh, tools out there written in C sharp. A lot of the tools are you know kind of going away from PowerShell more towards C sharp. So understanding these tools, be able to write your own tools, is going to make you a lot better hacker. Um, so yeah, just be able to do that makes you know like I said, some of the best best hackers I know. And red teamers know how to write their own code. I mean, you stop and look at some of the tools out there. Harmjoy, for instance, from Spectre Ops. He's a prime example of someone that writes tools, and he's a red teamer. So, I mean, this goes to show you, you look at all these high-level uh, pen testers and red teamers, they're writing exploits and they're writing tools. So if you really want to do well, then that's an area to focus on. So, uh, so red team focused skills. So malware and exploit development, where these are also important in pen testing, really working on obfuscating and uh, be able to evade systems with you know your PowerShell code or C sharp or any language you're writing in, be able to obfuscate. Sometimes there's written tools out there, and you can use different tools to obfuscate or going to manually modify yourself to try to take some of the headers out and signatures so it's not as easily detectable. Sometimes it could just be the name of the, the developer of the tool that the system's picking up or the name of the tool in the system. So just be able to modify your code where it's not being detected. Uh, Active Directory exploitation. You know, understanding Active Directory is not enough, but understanding Active Directory and knowing how to exploit it is very uh, important in, in red teaming. And command and control. So command and control is a very important tool. It allows you to send payloads to your, your systems. You know, once you get a system compromised, you get access to it, then you can do lateral movements, going to other computers, uh, other accounts, try to escalate privileges and help you maintain persistence, maintain control over the systems that, you, that you've that you exploited. And phishing and social engineering, these are two very uh, helpful tools because a lot of cases, maybe their systems are pretty secure as far as trying to, you know, crack passwords or if you're on you're doing a Zoom breach or you're on that network and maybe you're not able to crack hashes. So if you can send uh, malware through an email, through phishing campaigns, then that's a way to get initial foothold. Uh, social engineering to get people to execute that code. Uh, physical security exploits, gaining access to the buildings, getting past security into the server rooms or different areas to be able to uh, pull off your exploits. And, and uh, kind of here's kind of a learning path to follow to, for gaining these skills, kind of a good uh, baseline or good place to start. And this is assuming that you've got an IT background is uh, you got to learn the hacking skills. So certification courses like the OSCP, uh, Hack the Box uh, are, are really good to build those skills, you know, learning social engineering, but the OSCP is a really good one because you got to get those hacking skills before you really get into the red teaming. So you need to be a good hacker. So there's other courses out there like eLearn Security, where a lot of those other courses 
really focus on pen testing, which pen testing and hacking is similar with the OSCP, there is a big focus on, on hacking skills. And with some of the newer content of the OSCP, they've kind of added, went more in the direction of adding more pen testing content, whereas before is a lot, you know, mainly just a really great, you know, really great hacking uh, course and kind of teaching kind of the way pen testing used to be. But, you know, a good path is once you get the skill set of someone with OSCP, then you can start working on the red teaming skills. And this is something you can work on hand in hand because your red teaming skills, you're going to be working on Active Directory. So there's some uh, courses out there that are really good for red teaming. And Pentester Academy's Red Team Labs is a good resource. They have Active Directory in their labs. So they've got different levels, but they even have like a red team uh, certification. They have labs where you're using Linux to exploit Windows systems as well as Windows systems uh, to perform the same similar labs, learning how to use PowerShell exploits during that to compromise systems. And then eLearn Security, their Pinteresting Extreme uh, course is, uh, you know, it's labeled Pentesting Extreme, but it's a red team course. It's, it teaches red teaming techniques. They teach you exploit development, uh, code obfuscation, and some other techniques that are important for red teaming. Hack the Box Pro, uh, Rasta Labs. This is a really great, good one to, to learn. And it's kind of inspired uh, Rasta Mouse to start the zero point security red team ops course. I'm actually going through that. And if they actually have a certification with that, I'm currently going through that at the moment. And it's a really good course. I mean, it's even set up to where you can send phishing emails in that environment. And so some different tools and resources for red teaming. So your APT planning, as mentioned, the MITRE attack framework uh, vector. So there's the, the URLs for those resources. Those are really good to know. Just getting out there, learning how the uh, you know a threat actor's mind works, getting that threat actor mindset through through tools like the MITRE attack framework, learning how those TTPs work. You know, you get to see some of the common attacks, and this is a great resource for defenders too, and widely used by defenders. Uh, command and control, the C2 matrix. Uh, you can find that at the c2matrix.com. Uh, Cobalt Strike is one of the more popular ones, one of the first command and control. Although Metasploit is also considered command and control, uh, it's also pretty heavy on the exploit framework. But Cobalt Strike, Silent Trinity, uh, PowerShell Empire, uh, BC Security took over support of that and upgraded it to Python 3. And you can use uh, Star Killer, which is a web front end to it that makes it more similar to some of the other C2s that have a web front end. Or you can use these tools as a team. You can collaborate together. So you can you know, collaborate on the same project. So these really work good, good for collaboration. And a shout out to Critical, T Critical Start Team Aries with their Demio C2 that recently came out. It's written in Golang. Uh, They're adding new uh, items to it, each features as it goes along. So it just recently come out. They're pretty excited about it. It uh, looks like a really good tool. So uh, you should check that out. And it's a, it's a free tool. It's open source, like a lot of the other C2s. And operating systems, Slingshot OS or Slingshot Linux. You can find that on SANS. Uh, it's, a, it's a good uh, operating system for uh, pen testing as well as red teaming. It has a lot of the C2s already installed. So it actually Vector, I believe Vector is installed in that as well. Uh, Kali Linux and Parrot OS are good hacking options and Commando VM for, for Windows. So in red teaming, you're dealing a lot with Active Directory, so it's good to have a Windows box to, to test with. And resources and courses. So Hack the Box Pro, as mentioned, by Rasta Labs, one of Rasta Mouse's projects, Pentester Academy, Red Team Labs, and the institute.sector7.net. This is a good course. They have uh, relatively inexpensive and uh, kind of, it's, um, and I'm kind of listening some of these out based on, on the expense of the course. They have like a course on, on malware writing for red teaming. They have a privilege escalation as well as another course I can't think of at the moment, but these three different courses build red team skills. And sometimes some courses may 
deal more on the red team side and less on the malware. Uh, with this course, they have a good coverage of malware. So that's a good good uh, skill to develop, and they cover that in that course. And Zero Point Security, the Red Team Ops course by Ross the Mouse, which they actually have a certification for it. This is a pretty cool environment. You have VPN access to it. Uh, they have Windows boxes in there. You, you're, you have, you're separated through, you know, like through a firewall, so you're connecting in. Uh, so you have to send like a phishing email to get on that system, so it's really cool. If you have the OSCP, you can just take the exam, but I didn't really want to miss out on the educational uh, opportunity of going through the course fully. So that's currently what I'm working on. It's been a lot of fun so far. E-Learn Security, as we mentioned, the Pen Testing Ex Extreme course, uh, that one's a red team course and they cover malware. So it, it's a really good, well-rounded course, covers a lot of good materials. Uh, I haven't personally taken this course myself, but I've taken, taken the E-Learn Security Web App Pen Testing course and their mobile pen testing course and the good quality courses. And then I expect you to be an expert to be able to take these courses and learn from it. They start at, in enough detail that someone with, with technical experience can pick these up. And then the Spectre Ops, Adversary Tactics and Red Team Operations. I got to, fortunately got to take a couple courses before uh, COVID hit, really started ramping up and, and caused us all to have to social isolate, but I got to attend this talk and Harm Joy was one of the presenters there as well as some of the other gurus from, from Spectre Ops. But this course, uh, if, you, if you've got Cobalt Strike, this is a really good way to learn Cobalt Strike and use it as a Red Team Operator. 40 North has a couple of good classes. Their, their initial op access operations and intrusion operations, so they cover some malware in their course as well as silent break security, which uh, they, they have like a malware development course and the adversary simulation. So those are really great courses. And uh, the SANS Red Team Exercise and Adversary emul Emulation, this is a two-day course, and George Rochias teaches this. and uh, it looks like a really good course. I mean, they get into, you know, the red teaming from, you know, building a team type perspective as, as well as doing the, the technology piece. And then Cobalt Strike offers some free videos on their site. If you go to the training and support tab on the Cobalt Strike website, it'll, there's links to their YouTube page as well. So they've got all sorts of tools in Cobalt Strike that they teach you how to use. I mean, a lot of the tools are pretty easy to pick up on. But if you hadn't had experience with C2s, then you know, I highly recommend these videos because there's things that are done a little bit different with a, a C2, but they do a good job of covering the different uh, tools that you can use within Cobalt Strike. And Cobalt Strike uses PowerShell and C Sharp tools pretty heavily, as well as other scriptings and scripting languages and uh, executable files. So that's a good resource out there. You get a good idea of how red teaming works from the Cobalt Strike. Uh, video series as well. And resources and blogs. So here's a list of uh, some, some blogs and resources that I've, came, I've come across. Cause I started back, started dedicated red teaming back in November. So I've been doing a lot of uh, research and, and studying to learn the red team side of things. And so here's some good, the red team journal is kind of an older blog. Uh, I don't know, I don't think it's been updated lately, but there's a lot of good information on there. Uh, the Red Team Guide is based on the Red Team Guide book, but there's a lot of good documents on there on starting pen tests and different some of the different techniques and, I mean, uh, red teaming techniques. And then Thread Express is kind of a, a uh, site related to the Red Teams guide. Same people, it was kind of their blog before they came out with the Red Team Guide. Good information there. Uh, Byte Bleeder's website, along with his awesome tools. Uh, there's a lot of great information on his blog. Harm Joy's blog is great. BC Security, Spectre Ops, Rasta Mouse, House Sec from, is actually part of Spectre Ops, Silent Security's blog, 40 North's blog, and iRed.team and Vincent, Vincent Yu's uh, blogs. These are some really good, really good places to, uh, to learn, and I've used a lot, been using a lot of these resources as I'm going through the, the uh, Rasta Mouse's uh, Zero Security Red Team Ops course. And some other books out there. So this is uh, one of the books out here that recently came out, The Hacker's Playbook. If you've seen version two and three, 
version one and two, it's you know more pen testing related, but version three gets into into red teaming. I highly recommend if you don't have version two, get version two. It's got a lot of good real world uh, pen testing attack scenarios. So also the red team development and operations. This kind of shows you how to build a red team. And this is one of the authors is Joe Vest. That he formerly worked with SpectreOps. I got to meet him back during my the uh, red team training through SpectreOps earlier this year. So it's a really good book. And they, they go through and show you some, they got some different checklists and stuff on how to perform red team operations. So that's a really good book, even for even for management or people who manage red teams. I'd recommend this book because it kind of shows you how red team operations work. And then Hands-On Red Team Tactics, A Practical Guide to Mastering Red Team. Uh, this book actually covers some some uh, Cobalt Strike information. And this was recently re recommended yesterday during one of the, or actually Friday during one of the, the talks in Red Team Village. So it's a little more indicator of that it's a, a good resource. But these are some some good books out there as well as just, you know, pen testing books in general, learning pen testing. And, and certifications, there's not like a lot of certifications out there yet, but, and there may be more than this. And I saw another red team cert that is more physically and, and more lock picking and more physical security related. But what you're going to need from, in most cases, what you would gain from zero point securities cert, Pentester Academy Learning Security, the skills that you would need to performing, you know, red teaming, uh, operations while some of the physical stuff is important you can take lock picking courses and learn physical security to kind of really get started and especially if you have a pen testing background then these three cert courses or the or the certs would you would be good, good to have and uh some of these pen test focused certs from offensive security sans and e-learning security offensive security and the sans certs are really good for getting your foot in the door as a pen tester and good for getting pen testing jobs. The e-learning security is starting to gain more notoriety. They're really good courses and really well written and, and really well priced. If you don't have the money to, you know, if your company won't put you through SANS training, then offensive security and e-learning security, uh, those certification courses are really good ones, as well as the pen tester academy courses. And here's my contact information. Uh, I kind of got into to teaching and presenting a conference is a way to share. I used to mentor and still do mentor a lot of people, uh, a lot of times just answering questions and sharing resources. So this stuff's my hobby. I live and breathe this stuff. So I'm always up to talk about this stuff, give career advice and, and help out if you have any questions. There's my contact information. Feel free to uh, contact me. And so that concludes my presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Philip. Uh, as always, you have been amazing. And thank you so much for supporting the community and the Red Team Village as well. And for those of you that are um, online, uh, please join the conversation in Discord. Uh, we have the link in the bottom of the screen. So in the description, whether you are in YouTube, in Periscope, or in uh, Twitch, uh, please join us and 